Hi, today we are talking about shells, subshells and orbitals. In this lesson, you will get to know the difference between shells, subshells and orbitals. What are the shells? According to Bohr's atomic model, electrons revolve around the nucleus in specific circular paths. That circular paths are named as orbits or shells. These shells are also called as energy levels and they are numbered as 1, 2, 3 and 4. The number 1 shell is named as K shell. Number 2 shell is named as L shell. The number 3 shell is named as M shell and the number 4 shell is named as N shell and they are represented by small n. If n is equal to 1, it is named as k shell. If small n is equal to 2, it is named as l shell and so on. Shells may contain only a fixed number of electrons. Each shell is associated with a particular range of electron energy. Each shell must fill with electrons at first the fixed number of electron, then the remaining electron will move towards the next shell and so on. Say for example, we have sodium here. The atomic number of sodium is 11. First shell just accommodate two electrons. Now the remaining electrons are accommodated in L shell or the M shell. Depending upon the number of electrons that can be accommodate in these shell. Now we are done with filling these shell with 10 electrons and we are left with only one electron. So that electron will go into the end shell. So this is how we can put electrons in all these shells one by one. The maximum number of electrons that are present in the shells depend upon 2 and 2 rule. Here we have name of shells the value of n and the maximum number of electrons at first we have k shell the value of n for k shell is 1 so according to this formula let's find out how many electrons we can accommodate in k shell so 2 n 2 here instead of n we are going to put 1 here because the value of n for k shell is 1 so 2 here 1 and scale so 2 times 1 will be 2. Then comes L shell. The value of N for L shell is 2. And now let's put the value of N in this given formula. Again we have 2 and 2. For L shell instead of this 1 we are going to put 2 here. So 2 and then scale. The scale of 2 is 4. So we are going to put 4 here. 2 times 4 is 8. The maximum number of electrons are 8. So here the value of n for m shell is 3. So instead of this n we are going to put 3 here and a square. The square of 3 is 9 here. So 2 times 9 is 18. Then comes n shell. The value of n for n shell is 4. Now instead of this n we need to put 4 here. So here we have 2 and 2. So instead of n we are going to put 4 here and a square. The square of 4 is 16 and 2 times 16 is equal to 32. In this way, with the help of this formula, we can find out the maximum number of electrons that we can put in K, L, M and N shell. Then comes subshells. All the electrons having the same shell do not have same energy. Based on the energy of the electrons, the shells are divided into sublevels or subshells. It means subshells are driven from shells. When n is equal to 1, it is named as k shell. And in k shell, we have only one subshell that is 1s. This is the first shell that is k shell. And in this k shell, we only have one subshell that is named as 1s. When the value of n is equal to 2, we have L shell. And in L shell, we have two subshells, 2s and 2p. So in the L shell, we have two subshells that are 
2s and 2p. When the value of n is equal to 3, it is named as m shell. And m shell have three subshells in it that are 3s, 3p, and 3d. m shell, we have three subshells 3s, 3p, and 3d. When the value of n is equal to 4, it is named as n shell. And n shell have four subshells that is 4s. 4p, 4d, and 4f. The n shell we have four subshells: 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. So now there is a trick to memorize them. In k shell, we only have one subshell because it is present in shell number one. In n shell, we only have two subshells because it is present in shell number two. In and shell, we only have three subshells because it is present in shell number three. In N shell, we have four subshells because it is present in shell number four. Moreover, we write one S here because it is present in shell number one. We write two S and two P here because it is present in shell number two. We write three S, three P, and three D here because it is present in shell number three. We write four S, four P, four D, four F here because it is present in shell number 4. Then comes the number of electrons that can be accommodated in subshells. So the maximum number of electrons that are present in a subshell will be decided with this formula. In this formula, you can see L here. This small l means azimuthal quantum number and according to azimuthal quantum number, the value of L is fixed for every subshell. Say, for example, the value for S subshell of L is equal to 0. The value of L for P subshell is equal to 1. The value of L for D subshell is equal to 2. The value of L for F subshell is equal to 3. We have name of subshells here. Subshells. And the maximum number of electrons, sharp subshell, named as S subshell. According to this formula, now we are going to find out the maximum number of electrons that we can put in S subshell. So the value of L for S subshell is 0 here. So we need to put it here. 0 plus 1. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is equal to 2. So, the maximum number of electrons that we can put in S subshells are 2. Then comes the next one that is principal subshell and it is named as P subshell. So, for P, the value of azimuthal quantum number is 1 here. So, 2 instead of this L, we are going to write 1 here plus 1. So, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 add 1 is 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. Diffuse, and it is named as D subshell, 2, 2L plus 1 instead of this L. Now we are going to put this 2 here because this is specified for D subshell. So 2 times 2 here is equal to 4, 4 plus 1 is equal to 5, and 2 times 5 is equal to 10. So the maximum number of electrons that we can put in D subshells are 10. Then comes the next subshell that is fundamental and it is named as F subshell 12 plus 1. Instead of this L, we are going to write 3 here. That is a fixed number for F subshell. So 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. And 2 times 7 is 14 here. So, in this way, we get to know about the maximum number of electrons we can fill in all these subshells. Then comes orbitals. Orbitals are the region of subshells where the probability of finding the electrons are maximum. There are four different kind of orbitals that are donated by S, P, D and F, same as subshells and they all have a different kind of shape and different number of orbitals are present in all of them. So basically, orbitals are derived from the subshells as subshells are derived from the shells. S subshell has only one orbital. P subshell has three orbitals. 
B subshell have five orbitals and F subshell have seven orbitals. And these all orbitals have a different shapes. Say, for example, the shape for S subshell is spherical. The shape for P subshell is dumbbell. And the shape for F subshell is elongated dumbbell. Now it's time to summarize our today's lesson. At first, we have a nucleus and according to Bohr's electrons revolve around the nucleus in circular paths and that circular paths are known as shell. If the value of n is equal to 1, the first shell is named as k shell and if the value of n is equal to 2, so the next shell is named as l shell. If the value of n is equal to 3, so the next shell is named as m shell. If the value of n is equal to 4, so the next shell is named as n shell. Then comes subshell. Every shell have electrons, but that electrons don't have any fixed energy, so they have their subshells also. Because k shell is the first shell, so it only have one subshell. L shell is the second shell, so it has two subshells, 2s and 2p. M shell is the third shell, so it has three subshells, 3s, 3p and 3d. N shell is the last shell, 4 shell, so it has four subshells, 4s, 4p, 4d and 4f. The probability of finding the electrons in these subshells is called as orbitals. Orbitals are named as S, P, D, and F. In F subshell, we have only one orbital. In P subshell, we have three orbitals. In D subshell, we have five orbitals. And in F subshell, we have seven orbitals. These all orbitals have different shapes also. So, this is all about shells, subshells, and orbitals. Do like, comment, subscribe, and follow this channel for more informative videos. Thank you.